block six, the Great Depression, section one, crash and calamity, the section beginning with overproduction. So, why? Um, why the Great Depression? Why did this economic catastrophe start? And people have been, economists and political economists have been bantering about theories for 80 years now. The most fundamental answer is overproduction. American factories were producing more stuff than Americans could buy. And as soon as it was realized that there was more stuff than people, that were, as soon as it was realized that there was more supply than there was demand, prices collapsed. And people could no longer sell stuff, and the economy, even in the 1920s, was a consumer economy. If people were not spending money on stuff, the economy was not doing well. One of the reasons why there was overproduction was because workers were, although workers were making more money in the 1920s than they ever had before, workers were not being paid enough money to buy all of the stuff that they were producing. Um, middle class Americans, you know, in the 1920s were buying cars and refrigerators and radios, but there was more cars, refrigerators, and radios being produced that American consumers, especially the working class, could buy. Add to that the fact that there was high tariffs and the world was still recovering from World War I, Americans could not easily sell their refrigerators, cars, radios, etc., etc., to foreign countries um, because of tariff barriers, which we're going to talk about in a moment. But basically what happened was there was too much stuff and not enough people to buy the stuff. Another problem was the overexpansion of credit. Many families, businesses, and banks suffered because they bought more than they could afford. They bought stuff on payment plans, they bought stuff on installments, they took out uh, loans that they could not pay back, and as soon as their jobs were lost or their wages were cut or their hours were reduced, they had to declare bankruptcy. Economic activity slows down. When economic activity slows down, an economy obviously shrinks. When people are no longer spending money, that obviously leads to less demand, and less demand creates lower prices, less supply, less manufacturing, and even people aren't eating as much, which takes farm prices and lowers them. Farmers try to make up for the fact that, crop, that the price of crops are low by making more crops, but all that does is it gluts the market even further, sending the price of farm goods even lower than they had been previously. A major problem in the realm of international finance was something called the Hawley-Smoot Tariff, named after its congressional sponsors uh, Senator Hawley and Senator Smoot. The tariff passes before the crash. Republicans, remember, are usually pro-tariff. Uh, the Republicans have controlled the United States government through three administrations, through Harding, through Coolidge, and now through Hoover. Hawley-Smoot is passed through Congress. It starts out at about a 30-35% tariff, but once it makes its way through all the machinations and log rolling and deal making in Congress, the Holy Smoot Tariff puts tariff barriers at 60%. And what that means is a foreign country to import something into the United States had to pay a 60% tax on that item. And of course, foreign countries are going to reciprocate. If foreign countries cannot import stuff into the United States, they are going to say, well, the United States is not going to import anything into our country. So they slap high reciprocal tariffs on American goods. This Hawley Smoot tariff and the reciprocal tariffs that follow it pretty much take international trade and shut it off. Countries are no longer trading with each other. People are not able to make money selling those refrigerators and radios and whatnot overseas. With the domestic market in collapse, with the international market in collapse, economic activity, activity again, slows down incredibly. The final thing, kind of the final nail in the coffin, was the fact that Germany defaulted on its war debts. If you remember, 
United States. Oops. If you remember, the United States, Great Britain, France, Germany. The United States lent money to Germany. Germany then paid back Britain and France. Britain and France paid back the United States. Germany in the uh, early 1930s says, sorry, we can't pay anymore. That the economy was bad enough when times were good for everybody else. Now when times are bad for everybody else, there's simply no way that Germany can pay its reparations to Britain and France. When Germany stopped paying its reparations to Britain and France, Britain and France stopped paying back the United States. The banks lost another millions upon millions of dollars uh, in money that they expected to have. That money that they were getting from the British and the French, they were, you know, they could have used that money to invest in American business, to pay off loans, but that money was gone. Take all of these things in aggregate. Oh, a stock market crash wiping out the savings of millions. Bank failures wiping out the savings of even more millions. A slowing economy making people uh, unemployed, laid off from factories and shops. Overproduction in the factories making the, uh, the price, making um, overproduction making demand fall. An inability to sell not only domestically but for companies to sell internationally and then the economic, the, the international financial system seizing up because of Germany's inability to pay its debts is a recipe for disaster. President Hoover, the great engineer himself, hero of World War I, fed the Belgians, the progressive Republicans, sits there in the White House and is in completely over his head. Um, nobody uh, really could have known what to have done. Um, so what President Hoover does, uh, people start to look to pre President Hoover, what are you going to do? How can we make the economy grow? What are you going to do to fix this problem? And the great engineer in the White House um, will be forced to respond to the economic catastrophe that is upon America by 1930.